412-575-2600 on the Board of Supporters Hotline. You do not know we talk about during the break. Um, let's go back to the phone lines. Let's go to Pete and Squirrel Hill. Pete, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, guys. How are you tonight? Good. How are you? Hey, Josh. I love that call about the Antonio Brown hangover. That would be yeah. like having cancer, being cured, then being depressed after you were cured. But anyway, what I'm calling about is the bit. Penguins. I was glancing through, not reading in detail, the annual Hockey News preseason edition, and it didn't have the Penguins going to the playoffs. Hmm. I was wondering if, that, if they attribute that to the age of the core players or stars or to that many teams in the East get that much better. So I'll wait for your answer. Thank you. Uh, I don't, was that the official Hockey News prediction, or was that Matt Larkin's three-in, three-out thing that he does? Good question. I do not know the answer to either of those as far as why they would do that. But, but I, 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 could, I mean, if he's talking about the same thing that Matt wrote, Matt Larkin's a writer for the Hockey News. He does this thing every year, three-in, three-out. Three teams that went last year that will be out this year, three teams that didn't get in last year that will get in. He has the Penguins as one of the teams who were in last year that will now be out this season. Uh, His rationale was having to do with the team getting older, Mm -hmm. uh, his rationale also had to do with uh, the fact that he thinks, and, and this is what I've heard from other people who suggest the Penguins are not going to make it this year because the East has gotten so much stronger. The division that, itself, the, the, the Metro has gotten better. A lot of people just don't see the need to have gotten rid of Kessel. They don't buy the addition by subtraction, which is something maybe we should buy a little bit less around here after what we've seen with the Steelers. Uh, the difference between that and the A-B stuff, though, is, is like Kessel was a negative when it came to defense. Yes. Very little that Antonio Brown did on the field was a negative, as we are seeing now. But Kessel was a negative on defense. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I still want to, I have to see them play with structure and discipline for 82 games to buy that it's going to happen. I think you mentioned one of the guys that has to be really important. I think Tanev has to really be a, a bigger guy on that bottom six. I think Galtier Yeah, when he was out there with uh, Sid today before he got hurt, I saw him throw the body around a little bit, a yeah. couple really nice four checks. I mean, I, I guess I see what they're thinking with him kind of playing a Kunitz role. Um, you know, the impression that I've gotten is they, they haven't figured out if Cahoon is good enough to be on a top six. Maybe we sold ourselves too much on that, mm -hmm. but they have always been sold on Simone. So This is true. This is true. And it, it, the, here's the one thing that those moves in the offseason spoke to me, and this is just me personally, that they're trying to get more to a team that's built in Mike Sullivan's image and after his likeness to play his style. Well, if you get rid of the guy that he was feuding with and then you give the coach the extension, that better be the case. Pretty much is the case. I'd have to go there. Um, let's go to let's, – let's talk to Judy in Springdale. Judy, you're on the nightly sports call. I don't think she's there. I don't hear her. All right, sorry, Judy. Had to let you go. Uh, we got time for one more. Let's go to Terry and Gibsonia. Terry, you're on the nightly sports call. You guys were considering Barry Bonds as a potential ring of honor. My question is, if he was elected Hall of Fame, what team do you think he would choose to go in with? He's going to choose San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah. No doubt about it. Easily. He'll choose San Francisco because that was of the, of the two cities he played in. That was the one that probably embraced him the most. Well, I mean, yeah, that's. I think we maybe answered a little too quickly there. He could go in as a Florida Marlins hitting coach. <laughs> they loved him. They they loved him in Miami. It was strange. They how really many, loved how him. How many that. days did he have to work? Let me rephrase that. How many innings did he have to work? Jeez, I don't. He know. Showed, like did he just show up for the games or the batting cage before and leave in the middle of the games. I don't remember exactly. What there, were the rules there? There were some guys that said they he did some really great work with them. So that, that's something I really can't answer to. Meanwhile, we're out of time. So. I guess we'll have to catch your next go-around. He's Tim Benz. I'm Josh Taylor. Make the switch over to KDK. We got Penguins. We got Pitt football. We got Steelers to talk about. We got all kinds of stuff coming up during the news. Are they going to make a T-shirt for the roughing the punter call? We'll they they got to make a T-shirt for the roughing the punter call, right? It's not a bad idea. See you guys later.